A few months ago, our engineers did something cool by releasing CloudFormation support for Parallel Cluster. If you don't know what that means, CloudFormation is an AWS service that lets you store in a text file a very readable description of a cloud environment you'd like to have created. And then it just gets busy putting it together for you. You write the specs, CloudFormation goes and builds that sucker for you. Now, this is a style of computing that the industry widely calls infrastructure as code. The first time you see it done, it kind of blows your mind. The second time you see it done, you realize how much of your life you just got back. And also how much you can now tailor your HPC environment to your users' needs instead of giving them a one-size-fits-all experience. Now, this allowed us to do something that we think is even more cool. We can publish a recipe book for building out whole HPC environments with all of the right ingredients in the right place, in the right ratios, and connected to each other exactly right. Because we're nerds and we're lazy, we made these recipes modular so that we can reuse them over and over. And we pack them with all of the collective wisdom from our amazing solution architects, so you get to do things the right way the first time without having to know the answers in advance. Learning curve be damned. Now, some of these recipes you'll just grab off the shelf and you'll probably use forever. Some others, you might use them and then decide to peep inside so you can find the bits you want to tweak and change. They're all well documented and really, really readable. Now, our aim is to get you 98% of the way to your goal with like 5% of the effort. So Matt Vaughan, our awesome principal developer advocate for HPC, who created the idea of the library, came along to explain to us how you can use it. Now, once you hear what he has to say, we suggest heading over to the blog post to get some more details and then jump right in. What we have is this new library called HPC Recipes for AWS. This is a living repository um, hosted at GitHub, and it contains recipes that show you how to build HPC systems using AWS Parallel Cluster and the suite of other, of, of other AWS products and offerings um, that we often associate with clusters. So this is entirely self-service. You can just go to this repo, go to town, we will guide you through what you need to do. Um, but what we're gonna do today is we're just gonna dig into some of the key aspects of this uh, of this recipes library, of this GitHub repository, just to, uh, to orientate yourself. You know, so you, you land on the homepage here. Um, there, all of the recipes are organized into a set of themes. Um, inside the library and the way this works on the back end is in the library there's a recipes directory and all of the different themes just to have a really short name um, things that are associated with databases or in db things that are associated with im or in im p cluster is p cluster but um, we wanted to make sure that these were all discoverable so the top level readme file in the recipes subdirectory is regenerated every time we commit um, you know, every time we publish a new version of this repository. And so this makes a lightweight user interface so that you can kind of just discover everything that's here. The, the big deal about all of this is all of these recipes are built to be plug compatible with each other. So CloudFormation template, you know, if you don't want to look at the insides of a CloudFormation template, well, in this case, you don't need to if you don't want to. You can have a peep inside and, and explore to your heart's content. but the point behind this recipe library is we've put the ingredients together into these different recipe modules and these recipe modules you can think of them like a black box so a black box that gives you say for example the base layer of a cake um, another black box which gives you the cream filling for the middle layer of the cake and another black box that gives you say the icing on the cake and you can take you know just those high level ingredients and combine them together in a fairly methodical and simple way so that you can get you know the result which is you know birthday cake with candles on top and all that sort of stuff and and i mean the, the whole point behind this is that all of these things are compatible so this the cloud formation template that defines a cluster is going to look for things like a file system and a network to install itself into and so you've got a network cloud formation template 
which emits the values that the cluster is looking for. That's right. Ditto, the storage thing is going to emit some values that the cluster is looking for. So the cluster can just put its claws into those two or three API endpoints or those cloud formation endpoints and then build on top of that. That's absolutely right. So a really good example of this is that base layer of the cake, which is networking. Every single recipe in this library will work with both the basic networking recipe and the large scale networking recipe. So let's say you, you know, you've, you've got a new AWS account, you know, you haven't worked in HPC before, um, or you're just getting started in a new region. You can go to the readme for the rest of this recipe. Um, all of these readmes are written in kind of roughly the same, um, you know, roughly the same structure. There's some info, some background stuff you might need to know. And then there's a usage bit. And for the usage bit, it can be as simple to use this cluster, uh, to use this template as clicking on a link. And this will pop up something in the CloudFormation console. So, this so now this is happening inside your CloudFormation console in your AWS account. It's That's opened right. that stack that you just clicked on, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Every single one of these templates can be embedded in these links and in the recipes library. We've done that for you. But the cool thing is, We've also taught you how to do it, um, but here this is just an example of one of the of the of the large scale networking stack. You give it a name. Um, this name is important. We actually build some of the other uh, some of the other recipes to import from an existing stack, um, and this means that you don't have to go and look up all of the little values and variables that get set if you just give some of our stacks the name of your networking stack. It will go in and it knows, you know, because we've told it, what the default subnet is, what the default private subnet is, what the CIDR block is for, you know, for your VPC. Um, you know, all the things that a downstream consumer might know can just be imported into, a, uh, into, a, into another stack that consumes this one. This is a really powerful feature of CloudFormation. So you can you can basically launch you could launch this stack. You could give the stack name something like uh, Chemistry Network mm -hmm. if you wanted to, right? Or Chemistry VPC, and that's going to create a virtual private cloud for the Chemistry Group. You can then go on to build clusters in there. You could build another VPC if you wanted to for the Physics Crowd Which and keep them to. separate, right? Mm -hmm. um, but when you go to build more stuff for the chemistry cloud, when you go to build another cluster for them, that cluster, you can just tell it to go and get its parameters, get its input from the VPC for chemistry. That's and right. how to find all of that data inside the chemistry stack. If we hop over and look at my CloudFormation console for US East 2, um, we can actually see this. But you'll notice that down at the very bottom is this HPC networking stack. Um, I launched this stack by clicking on a button in my own GitHub repository, and now I never have to do this again. Um, I've, you know, I've installed a managed Active Directory. I've installed a persistent uh, Elastic file system. These are both also based on stacks um, that can reference and work with the HPC networking stack. Other things that are important, these are the parameters. So these are the values that we set when we created this stack. Mm -hmm. um, here are all of the resources that were created. Um, nice thing about AWS is it lets you create a lot of cloud resources. And of course, the best thing about all of this, beyond just the parameters that we've got in here, if you ever feel like it and you want to go and getting a bit more adventurous, you can download this, this CloudFormation template, tweak it to your taste, and then kick it off again. Uh, and now you've got your own custom environment and you can keep tweaking it quite a lot. You sure can. And the way that you do that is back in the CloudFormation console. Let's say you've downloaded a stack and you've, you've, you've fussed around with it and you don't want to push it up to GitHub yet, or you don't want to share it. You know, you're not quite ready to push share it with the broader community. Um, you don't have a place for it. The nice thing in the console and the CloudFormation console is you can just upload a template file. Yep. Literally like, you know, here's my cluster launch template. It quickly validates it. Um, the nice thing that means, like, if you've misplaced, you know, a, a comma or you know, put brackets in there where you're not supposed to, it will error out before you have, you know, before you have to wait for anything. But you know, in this case, this works great. 
So here, you know, we'd give it a name. And then we can provide stat names. This is using that import mechanism to bring in data from existing stacks. So this, this cluster needs a network. It needs an Active Directory because it's a multi-user cluster and it needs mm -hmm. an elastic file system. We want that to be persistent because that's the home file system. So we could go back to your CloudFormation console and steal those parameter names or well, those stack oh, names. Yeah. yeah. And then this persistent EFS. So as long as I name the stack something, you know, that, you know, even some that's of cool. my limited goldfish like memory can, you know, remember what it does. That's it. So this is great because if we were to click go on this, um, this cluster will come up really fast because it doesn't have to network. It doesn't have to set up AD. It doesn't have to provision a file system. It just pulls these things in, sticks them in the parallel cluster config file and builds the config. There are some things, of course, that we actually have to select. Yep, like your key so that you can log in. Your Sense. Key, the size of your scratch file system. So you really don't lose anything in this approach. Um, this is just kind of compared to figuring out figuring it all out yourself. This is just drop dead easy. So, so what's neat about this in the P cluster folder, uh, in the P cluster directory on 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 the Git repo, yep, you can see that there's a bunch of these different folders for doing quite complicated solutions, and in the, in particular, so there's one there for each of the HPC instance families so that you can actually just have a cluster running that instance family with all of the bells and whistles figured out for you and these are perfect for people to just try new things right if you just wanted to try launching a graviton cluster you could just go into that folder and there's literally it's just a one click launchable right like so this is a perfect kick the tires cluster yep so that you can get busy working straight away and the beauty of it, it's it can be a production cluster. It, it would be a production cluster if it was perfect for you from the get-go. And if it's not perfect for, me, for you from the get-go, you can just download this CloudFormation template and tweak it. Now, as we mentioned, now that you've heard all of this and seen it in person, go and check out the blog post Matt wrote and get busy building. Oh, and let us know how you get on. We'd love to hear from you. If you're enjoying these videos, please give us a like and consider subscribing to the channel so that we can keep making more to help you understand how the cloud works and to show you new ways to help all the scientists and engineers around you who use HPC every day to do amazing things. It's what gets us motivated as well. See you next time.